Hello YouTube friends, today I'm reviewing things that you won't believe are legally allowed in your food from Dr. Mike and I'm so excited about this one. Let's see what's in our food. Old hair, poop, things you'd never allow yourself to eat. But according to the FDA, you've probably been eating them for years. The United States Food and Drug Administration has identified levels of 179 natural or unavoidable defects in food that are an acceptable risk to your health. Let's take a look at the shocking things that the FDA allows on your plate. Pee-woo? Okay, just saying, like, I know it sounds unreasonable when it's like unavoidable defects. This is what the FDA has completely cut down to. So any extraneous material that really just shouldn't find its way into our food is not allowed. So these 179 things are things that are virtually impossible to avoid because our food comes from things like plants that's grown in dirt and all those things have bugs and rodents and other things living in and around them. And it is just unavoidable because Unlike things like metal defects in our food, we can't just get it all out with a magnet or something like that. The FDA's Food Defect Levels Handbook lists insect parts as the most common defect in your food. We're talking legs, wings, thoraxes, whole heads, and brains. These insects show up in your frozen fruit, frozen broccoli, frozen Brussels sprouts. Odds are- All plants. And this is largely because the insects are incredibly difficult to keep out because they are small and they tend to live inside plant or very close to and then they get harvested with the food. Anything that grows out of the soil probably has some degree of insect parts that accidentally get taken in when the plants get harvested. In the case of items like cinnamon that get ground into a powder, the insects can get ground in there too. And while eating those insects might not sound too appetizing, remember, the FDA deems it poses no inherent hazard to your health. It could potentially give you a little protein kick too. The second- So with our spices, those actually tend to be grown in very exotic, places and dried outside and just by nature of that process a lot of insects tend to be in and around that processing not to deter you from eating your spices they make your food more delicious eat them and it's fine you'll get your protein kick and it'll be good but that is where you'll find some more insect part. Most common defect in American food is mold, rot, and mildew. And if you've ever let fruits or vegetables sit too long on the table or in the fridge, then you know mold is inevitable. And it's pretty easy to notice. Blue cheese, good mold. Shiitake mushrooms, technically good mold too. But some mold is quite dangerous and can actually produce mycotoxins. Unfortunately, mold is common in something you may consume every day. Coffee beans. Don't panic though. In order to pass the inspection by the FDA, no more than 10% of beans in any given count can be moldy. And there's an important note out here. While small amounts of mold in foods monitored by the FDA is okay, you should never eat a piece of bread with even a small spot of mold on it. While you may think mold exists. Yeah, so what he's saying here is absolutely true. And it is a distinction between like softer foods, like breads, because if you think about it, it really is built like a sponge and it's easier for that mold to travel. So it's not where you see the mold visibly growing that it is. So you can't just like cut it off and move on. But things like cheese, you absolutely can. I actually know a food manufacturing company that did that. They got a shipment of Parmesan cheese that was molded. And so they just cut off the molded part and used the rest like you normally would. And that's absolutely fine. There was no greater danger risk to consumers. And the same thing holds true if you do that at home. So if it's growing on like a harder food, you can, you can do that and it's safe. I do want to mention with the mycotoxins he mentioned earlier, the FDA does control greatly for those. So we do detect and control for mycotoxins because those are extremely dangerous if you consume them. So that's really not what he's talking about getting into our food. Just to make that clarification, if that wasn't clear for anybody, mold spores 
Yes, that's inevitable. But mycotoxins, we control for those because not good. This and just that discoloration, the microscopic roots of that mold spread throughout the entire item. This is unlike berries, where you can throw away the berry with the visible mold and consume the other normal appearing ones. Oh. I got bear hair in my mouth. And speaking of bear hairs, rodent hair is the third most common <laughs> defect in our food. It shows up commonly in ground spices like cinnamon, curry, oregano, and nutmeg, but also in items like macro. Yes, again, those are the spices and same sort of issue there um, that I mentioned before with the spices processing, those tend to be outdoors processed, which is much harder to control for rodents and insects getting in and around, but actual manufacturing facilities take lots of measures to reduce the risk of outside things getting into our food once it reaches their facility. So most of these contaminants really come from it being grown and harvested or any processing that happens outside because it really is so much harder to control any pest issues when you're outdoors because we're using their home for our processing. Pony and cheese, peanut butter, and popcorn. Literally, the FDA says one rodent hair per 100 grams of peanut butter is A-OK. -okay. I think if you have a pet like I do, we definitely- Okay, just saying here though, it's not like every 100 grams of peanut butter, you will have a rodent hair. Just gonna make that distinction. This is the absolute maximum that's allowed to be in the food. So the manufacturing processes are going to try to control for this to be as low as possible because if you are reaching that one hair per 100 gram max every time, that indicates that you have a problem because if you're hitting that consistently, chances are you also are going over it fairly consistently. And that's an issue which would cost a whole lot of money for them to recall those foods that they can't sell. And so we try to control for it to be as low as possible so you really aren't consuming as many as the threshold is. We consume more hairs than that. Right, Bear? High five. <laughs> Probably the fanciest name. Yeah, honestly, anyone with pets is going to be consuming more hairs than not because more contaminants get into your food post you buying it than are in your food when you buy it. And that's things, that's all sorts of things like fecal matter and bacteria and hairs from your pets or what have you. And even like fibers from your clothing that get into your food post you buying it than what's in it at the time of purchasing. On the list, Mammalia excreta is the fourth most common defect. Despite its Latin name, Mammalia excreta is not some high-end perfume or university catchphrase. <laughs> it's poop, animal poop. Where there are animals, there is poop. And you've most likely been eating it. I'm talking black pepper, cocoa beans, even wheat. I understand that eating Mammalian excreta is probably the most disgusting thing you can think of, but just remember that manure or cow poop is used to grow crops all around the world. So say it with me. We we all poop and thank you poop. This next one isn't even so bad. <laughs> okay, just saying, I love his attitude about this because there really isn't anything we can do about this other than being momentarily disgusted. So I appreciate that like he's totally chill about this and, and like there really is no avoiding it. So this is, I feel like the best possible attitude you can have about having poo and rat hair and whatever in your food. Foreign matter. This is a random collection of all sorts of weird little things that can slip into the growth, harvesting, and shipping process. Things like sticks from plants, stones from the earth, burlap bag material from transport, and cigarette butts. The FDA only allows up to 1% of the weight of pickings and siftings of these foods to contain foreign matter though. So it's really nothing you should concern yourself about. How about a tasty bowl of babies? That's right, the FDA recognizes that it is financially and realistically impossible to completely eliminate insect eggs, larvae, and- Okay, I was really concerned about where he was going with this for a second there, because I'm like, I don't remember that being in the FDA's criteria, but yeah. Yes, larvae and insect babies, very true, because again, those tend to live inside our food. 
it's impossible to eliminate them completely, even though we can control for them and minimize how many are there. Maggots from your food. That's why they allow up to five fly eggs per 500 grams of canned tomatoes, two three millimeter long larvae in canned corn, or 10 insect eggs per eight ounces of raisins. And I only thought people ate larvae on Fear Factor. We are so- <laughs> And I know this sounds so gross, but those are actually really small numbers for how common it would be if we didn't control for them. So just bear that in mind. Oh, grateful to Mother Earth for our food. So we shouldn't be too ungrateful to learn that she's left a bit more of herself in there than meets the eye. The FDA allows a small amount of shells, stems, sand, and pits in our food. You'll find pits in dates, olives, and prunes, shells with your nuts, stems in your cloves, and sand in your cumin. Again, all very small amounts. There's probably some good fiber in there anyway. And finally, it's time for what I think is the most disgusting defect the FDA allows in our food. Parasitic cysts. It sounds gross when I even say it. A cyst is a sac that can be filled with air, liquid, pus, or parasites. A parasitic cyst is a sac that contains the larvae or the baby version of a parasite. Consumption of undercooked meats and fish puts you at a higher risk for developing parasitic infections like worms in your GI tract. Complete- Yes, if you're wanting to avoid this, just avoid raw fish and raw meat in general and you should be golden. But yeah, yeah, this is really gross to think about. I'm really uncomfortable. I ate recently, that doesn't help. Whatever. Prevention of parasitic cysts from fish is impractical, as they're frequently found inside the fish, and therefore some of those cysts inevitably wind up in our seafood. For example, in whitefish, the FDA allows up to 50 parasitic cysts per 100 pounds. That's why I recommend you err on the side of caution and skip that gas station sushi. That was a delight to react to. His attitude toward all of this is just absolutely refreshing because most people are just plain disgusted and then they don't want to eat. And I really hope that's not how you feel after watching this. Because again, these are the maximum thresholds. You're eating far less than what those numbers are. And we should really be resting easy knowing that we are controlling for this. And not letting all of these disgusting things be in our food at even higher levels. Because without the FDA's regulations, we absolutely would be eating them at much higher levels. Anyway, if you found this interesting, I'm sure you'll find this video interesting as well, and we'll see you next time.